Hi, I'm Kristen Gutierrez, your host for Women in Localization's Ask the Expert. And today I'm joined by Stephanie Caldwell. Hi, Steph. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so tell all of us who you are. Tell us about you. Yeah, um, so hi, I'm Stephanie. Uh, I currently live in Colorado and um, I'm originally from Chicago. Um, I lead the localization program at Reddit and I've been in the loc industry for going on a decade now almost. Um, and I love it. Wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> I love it too. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your background and like how a decade ago we got to know you in the localization industry. Yeah. So I started learning Spanish when I was really young uh, because my best friend's Colombian and I used to, well, just spend a lot of time with her family. <laughs> Uh, and I would go over to her house for every Christmas and celebrate with Paul Novena. And I remember one of my first times trying to speak Spanish was they gave me like song lyrics and everybody like had an instrument. Um, and I was like, first of all, I can't sing. Like I try to sing, but I'm an awful singer. Um, and I was just butchering the Spanish song and I just fell in love like with their culture, their family and the language. And so I studied Spanish all the way um, through college. I volunteered in Ecuador. You know, I just, I just loved, I loved understanding a new language and like the, the way it changes like your perception and, and your, uh, your love of life. Uh, Cause it's just, it's like, a, it's like a whole other world when you're speaking another language, but you're thinking in another language. Um, and then I said, okay, well, I want to learn Italian. And so I started to do that and I ended up taking a university course in in the South of Italy. And I was not to toot my own horn, but I was fluent within two months. Um, And so I apparently have an ear for languages. And so I said, you know, I really want to find out like, how do I make money off of this? Because I love languages. Um, And I had this, I had this dream to be an expat and I was going to graduate. Because uh, I was doing my master's in localization, and I said, "Okay, I'm going to graduate and move to Europe, and I'm going to be a translator, and I'm going to live this amazing life." Uh, and then I realized I had a lot of student loans, and it wasn't going to be very lucrative to be a translator. Uh, and so I started working on the vendor side of the industry and gaining experience there. Um, and then after a couple of years, I decided to make the jump over to tech. And let me say, I'm never moving back to the vendor side. I I love being um, like kind of like the go-to person within an enterprise for localization. Um, and so that's what brought me to Reddit last summer. I love the background and like the weaving <laughs> and uh, just like that true innate, like passionate desire due to being a best friend and that connection that like literally led you to us. So <laughs> thank you to her. I hope yeah. you're still in touch. <laughs> uh, definitely, of course. Uh, okay. So then from student to translator to vendor to buyer, uh, share with us some wisdom that you've learned along the way. Um, I would say um, from the buyer side, um, the biggest piece of wisdom I could provide somebody is to learn other areas of the business that you work in. A lot of times when you join a company and, you know, international's top of mind, they're really excited. They probably already tried to start localizing and had a couple hiccups along the way. Um, but I have found that I typically start with product. And so software localization um, is always like the first stepping stone within the business, but it's definitely not the last. Um, and so you don't want to get like pigeonholed into only understanding software localization when six months down the line, your marketing team is going to say, hey, we need to run this campaign in Germany and you have no idea what they're asking for. And so I would definitely encourage, even if you're not starting to support those teams, shadow those, those teams, um, just understand like what's on their roadmap so that you can start providing that guidance um, and acting as, you know, like their consultant. Uh, so when they're actually ready to fire off a localization, you already have those relationships built and you know exactly what they need and when, and hopefully you have those resources and budget allocated already. Um, but just don't isolate to just one department within an organization. 
That is great advice. Do you find yourself having to build a value added deck to like demonstrate to your colleagues in other departments kind of what your role is and what you're adding, you know, delivering to the business? All of the time. <laughs> you know, it could be something as simple as like, this is what localization is. This is how it varies in translation, or this is what internationalization is. And so, you know, it's important to kind of speak the language of your your stakeholder. And so when I'm working with engineers, obviously we're a little bit more in the weeds and we're talking about the technical how to internationalize and localize. Um, but when I'm talking to marketing versus my leadership team, you also have to understand like what KPIs matter to them. So like what matters to me is obviously quality first and foremost, but that's not always a metric that your executive team cares about. They might want to understand um, what is your time to market I mean, they probably definitely care about quality, but it doesn't usually rise up unless there's a problem. Um, and so uh, just being aware of like what's important to your individual stakeholders and being able to communicate what value you provide or how you're, do- or how you're supporting them on delivering on their goals um, is really important. Too. Um, okay, so then just to conclude, thank you for being here. Share or tell us something about you as an individual outside of the industry. Ooh, as an individual. Um, oh, okay. You no, know, just as you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, most people would probably know that um, I fly fish a lot. Um, and so uh, my husband and I, most weekends, except in the winter, I've given up on winter fishing because it's just too cold in Colorado. Um, but anytime it starts to get warm, um, you will probably find me on a river or on a lake because uh, I love fly fishing and Colorado is just, it's just a beautiful place to live. Um, and, you know, being outdoors and just enjoying that um, is wonderful. That is amazing. I don't know if a lot of people know that. So for fly fishing or localization cross depend departmental um you know strategies hit up stephanie yeah exactly <laughs> all your <happy> girl <laughs> all right well uh thank you so much for being our guest today we really enjoyed this thank you so much Kristen. okay bye bye <laughs>